Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. So I figured I'd take this time while the Epiphone body is curing to do a unboxing of the next victim of my demise. So here we go. Kind of a interesting, some of these boxes are getting more and more interesting as far as uh, what people are shipping. This is two boxes that are put together as one and uh, yeah, seemed to across the top. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. I don't know if it'll be in the camera or not. I gotta be careful because I think the body, no, it's not pushing on the box. Oh, great packing peanuts. So this is the next victim. It's an LTD ESP M15 which is in a little bit of rough shape. It's pretty dirty as you can see. It's got a lot of dust down all over it. Looks like somebody had this thing sitting around for a while. It's got some scratches on it. It's got a few dings on it. The back is pretty good as far as ding like it goes, but the front of it has a little bit of dings on the edges of it. Not that big of a deal to me. That it's all fixable. So the specs on this thing, you have a uh, mini humbucker, which is our rail. It's kind of nice too because it's wired up with five wires. I can split it, not a big deal. Unfortunately, the uh, humbucker is not, it only has a hot and a cold wire, uh, hot and ground on it, that's about it. It's got the Cosmo Black, Black Chrome, whatever you want to call it, hardware on there. Uh, string through, as you can see. Volume, tone, three way switch. What I think I'm be doing with that is turning into a five way switch so I can split this guy here up. Now, it's got a 13.77 inch radius on the neck. Now I kind of, I got 12 inch blocks. Um, I don't think I have a 13 inch uh, radius block for doing the fret leveling. So I'll probably end up doing this the old fashioned way with a large block go moving side to side. The frets are, uh, what do they say, they're, they're, they're extra jumbo is what they're called and they're, they're pretty high up there. I am noticing a little bit of Problems with the edge of the frets, some of them are kind of like sticking up a little bit, which really, to be honest, is not that big of a deal. What I'll do is I'll get my kit that I got for installing frets and see if I have a 13.77 inch radius uh, fret block, whatever you want to call it, that'll go on top of the fret, clamp them down, and add a little CA glue on each side of the fret. That should put them in place and keep them in place 
and then clean up the excess glue with a little bit of acetone, not that big of a deal. I really don't want to do a complete fret job on it, although I did want to do something with the fret markers, but I don't think I'm going to end up doing that. Uh, it's better to remove the frets to do stuff with the fret markers than to uh, leave the frets in. It's a lot harder to mess around with the fret markers that way. Plus, I don't know how thick this logo is over here of the M15, and if I change it to a 12 inch radius, it might kind of like see through on the edges over here they'll start fading out which may look cool I don't know but it may go into the light lettering so I'm not going to do that it's got the ESP tuners on there which aren't that big of a deal they're actually pretty decent they're not bad I've messed around with those before uh, it's got a thin u-shaped neck it's a uh, um, uh, maple neck basswood body now, the one thing that I didn't get with this was the control cover for the back cavity, which is not a big deal because I've been kind of customizing my own. I'll be putting new pots inside of here as well, um, cleaning up and getting rid of all this wire mess that's making it look a lot more nicer than what it is. And as you can see, there are a lot of scratches on the back of this. And this, this guitar, I guess, was used pretty good. Um, there's no cracking on each side of the neck, which is a good thing. A lot of times it's it's a finish crack. Now, a lot of you guys say that your neck should be pretty tight, okay, you know, snug inside the pocket. Now, I say uh, snug up to a point because as you're tight, if it's too snug, especially on the sides over here, once you start tightening up that neck, you are going to get a crack over here, especially if you really crank on your necks and then tighten them down, it will crack the finish on this side. And I've noticed that with uh, some of the guitars that I've taken apart, because um, I have another ESP in blue, I believe it's got a quilted top. I end up doing a lot of work to that. Um, I think I gave that away for a um, an auction for, um, uh, it's with um, autism. Uh, one of my father's friends came over and we ended up, uh, we were talking and stuff and his son ended up, uh, his son's kid has aut is autistic. And I brought up, they were talking about some type of an auction to raise money for the kids that are, to are autistic. And I gave him, brought up the ESP case and said, here, auction this off. And that one I noticed that it had a little bit of a crack on the side and that might have been from myself over tightening that neck. So you gotta be careful with that. Uh, what else with this thing? It's got uh, the mini humbucker is an LS100 rail. Uh, the regular humbucker is a LH100. Um, is, let's see, I did I miss the 25 and a half inch scale. Um, then you say shape profile neck, which is this is this you could feel it. It's is actually very nice thin neck. This is not a baseball bat. So what I got planned with this thing? Oh God, I hate this. One. I hate when people do this. I don't know if about you guys, but I do not agree with the saying about leaving your strings hanging off the tuner pegs. Uh, saying that well, that actually adds more sustain or changes something with the eye. I think that's all bullshit. I've seen a lot of guitars that people will just take the extra and wind it up and let it sit there. If you have a case or something that you put your guitar in, you can actually end up damaging the headstock, scratching it up really good just by the little needles that some of these strings are. They're pretty, pretty sharp on the edges of them where they're cut off, and that can do some damage. I don't believe in that. Uh, Rosewood fretboard on this thing. And I think I mentioned everything else. That's the specs on there as I can think of. So this will be the next victim. I'm not too sure of what I'm actually going to do with this thing. I, I do want to do a matching headstock with whatever I do with the body. The body, I'm thinking about taking it down about an eighth of an inch on the top. And then doing the same thing that I did with the Epiphone body is putting a cloth top on this one as well. But I want to match the headstock with it too. And I'm not too sure. I want to do uh, an Iron Maiden uh, Live After Death scene on one of these things. And the bot problem with it is, is the location of the hardware and the pickups and body size. 
Now, if this was a bigger body, as far as uh, maybe length goes, maybe a little bit on the width side, kind of like a Les Paul, and I did the same thing like I'm doing with the Les Paul Epiphone body and got rid of one of the pickups, I probably would have enough room to have the whole scene that I need, uh, well, the whole part of it that counts with Eddie on there, and then take pieces of that and incorporate it into the headstock as well, uh, so they kind of match up as far as color and action and whatever else scenery that's going on with it. But I'm not sure of uh, how it's going to fit on here. And the biggest thing about doing something with a logo or Iron Maiden or, you know, especially when there's a character involved and stuff, you want to be able to see it. You don't want to be able to, be, to look at it. Now, I could put, like, Eddie over here off to the side and have the graveyard scenery over here. But it doesn't work. I don't think it works out that way. I think Eddie's over here and the graveyard scenery is over here on the shirt. So, and even like the album cover and stuff like that. So I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't want to cut half of his head off, you know. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. This will be the next victim, the ESP LTD M15 in a little rough shape, but I can make it a whole lot better. All right, you guys, take it easy. Have a good one, and I will catch up with you all later.